Hello and welcome to another Tsudin session. How about that? So uh, today uh, I wanted to address something on my computer. Right, so uh, recently I started to run out of uh, disk space and I was thinking, uh, what can I do about that, right? So I just need to go through um, my entire hard drive and just sort things out, remove what's needed and stuff like that. And uh, I was thinking, maybe there I have a lot of duplicate files in there uh, and it would be nice to actually like find uh, the duplicate files. Which led me to, um, you know, several, like, um, trail of thoughts. I was thinking maybe I can even write such tool myself. That would be an interesting exercise, right? Uh, so, and some time ago, when I was in university, I actually read a book about computer forensic. Um, I, I never read it to full completion. I just read, like, the first chapter or so. Um, so um, for it, it, the book was in Russian, right? So for Russian speaker, um, you know, folks out there, I think the, the book literally called Forensics, Forensica. Uh, just a second. Uh, eh, how do you spell this word? Uh, yeah, so this one, I think, um, yeah, so that's the book. Uh, and I think it was at the time available like publicly officially um so i'm i'm not sure so um, i'm gonna put the link to to this thing uh in the description for anyone who's who's interested in this kind of stuff right so and um so the book uh the book about forensics is, is that how i spell forensics in english because i don't quite remember uh forensics okay so, but it's specifically about computer forensics, right? Uh, computer forensics. Right, and uh, there was one technique that was mentioned in there on uh, basically scanning the uh, files of the computer that were confiscated by law enforcement, right? So essentially, if the law enforcement uh, confiscated a particular machine or computer, they need to quickly find, uh, you know, some interesting information to investigate on the computer. And how do they do that quickly? Well, uh, the idea is you build a database of uh, hashes of the common files, right? So you take all of the common files, uh, for example, the system files of Windows or the system files of all of the distributions of Linux and uh, maybe common uh, image files, common uh, video files. Luckily, you can get uh, this kind of information pretty much like easily uh, right you just download this thing you can even maybe automate that process of building this database of common files and the cool thing is that the hashes are usually like a, you know 32 bytes or 64 bytes or something it's just like a very small number and you can build a huge databases of hashes of common files like enormous databases and they're not going to take that much space right so uh and you have a database of the hashes of the common files what do you do? You take the confiscated computer, you scan all of the files, you know, traverse the directory uh, directory recursively, and essentially uh, take the hash and check if it's a common file. If it's a common file, you ignore it, right? If it's a file that never appeared in a database of common files, you remember it, and then at the end of the scan, you present the list of all of the unusual files on the uh, on the machine, right? And this is where you want to start investigating and looking further, right? So you want to filter out everything that is not of the interest, right? The common stuff, and uh, start looking into something that user might have created. Uh, so yeah, and that's the like apparently a common technique. I don't know if this technique is still actually used, but at least that's what one of the technique that was uh, mentioned in that specific book. Hopefully, I actually gave the link to the right book. If this is not the right book, just just let me know. So, and this is a pretty cool technique, and it's also a simple one, right? So anyone can do that, right? So you don't have to be a law enforcement to just pull that off. You can be, start building this kind of databases yourself. So, um, and what I wanted to do, I wanted to like maybe utilize a, a similar technique, right? So <clears throat> to, to find uh, duplicate files. 
essentially what I want to do, I want to traverse my machine and uh, for each file I want to compute the hash and I want to remember that hash, right? I want to remember that hash and then as I compute, if I encounter the same hash, I mark it as a duplicate and I basically collect the list of the duplicates. Right, so basically as I traverse the machine, I'm going to be maintaining a huge uh, hash table, um, you know, of, of file hashes. And then at the end, uh, I only need to present the list of the files that, uh, rather the list of the hashes with the paths that have more than uh, one hit, right? So, and that sounds actually relatively easy to implement and also pretty fun to implement. So, uh, of course, I could have used some, you know, existing tools, but I mean, I wouldn't be making video then, right? So what's the point? So what what is uh, what is more interesting for you to watch? Uh, a video of me making a program that does that in C or me using some sort of lame third party thing and uh, that doesn't even work properly, right? So what's more interesting? So it's just up for you to decide. Um, <clears throat> Um, if you like watching people using lame third-party tools, well, all power to you. I mean, sure, if that's what you want to see. Anyway, so um, that's what I wanted to implement today, right? That's what I wanted to implement today. So we need only several components in a, in a recipe for the success. We need to be able to recursively traverse the files and we need to be able to compute the hashes of the files and we need to be able to put the hashes and paths of the files to a hash table. So uh, we'll see how we're going to do that. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to go to my trusty Zosin folder and let's create um let's create a folder for the project i don't know we need to uh, call the project somehow uh right uh so <clears throat> so it's a tool that looks for duplicate files uh let's call it something like ddupe i don't know <laughs> i don't know I have, I have a lack of imagination right now so uh i'm gonna just call it whatever and then maybe later if i come up with a better name uh, i'm gonna rename that thing so cheers um, so let's create a main.c file um, and uh, let's create a hello world. Money. I didn't want to spell money, but I did spell money. So I suppose it would make sense to actually accept command line arguments, right? Uh, at least we're going to accept maybe some flags and whatnot. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's actually write a hello world. Uh, and uh, maybe create a make file that will compile our program. Uh, ddupe, and it depends on main C, and I'm gonna call the compiler C flags uh, O uh, libs. Right now we don't really depend on too much, uh, but maybe in the future we're gonna actually add some dependencies. So I'm gonna enable as many warnings as it's reasonable to do. Uh, we're gonna use C11 standard, and we're gonna be pedantic about it and we're going to include the debug information. Okay, so leaps right now is gonna be empty, but maybe in the future we're gonna add something. And let's just uh, try to compile it. Something went horribly wrong. I forgot to provide the name of the program that I'm trying to compile. So this is hard. <laughs> uh, I also forgot to provide, like I pretty much forgot to provide everything. Uh, okay, so we have a couple of unused variables in here. So let's do uh, that, argc, argv. Uh, right, so we compiled everything. And if I try to run the entire thing, there we go. We have a hello world. And apparently I forgot to put a new line in here. There we go. So now we have a new line. And if I recompile the entire stuff, should be fine. Okay. So what do we need to do? Uh, let's actually start laying out the to-dos. Uh, recursively, civilly. Uh, how do you spell recursively? Recursively traverse the file system. So this is the first thing. So then compute uh, the hashes of the files. Uh, build the hash table of the hashes. I don't know, build, build the hash table. Okay, so we'll need at least like three, uh, you know, steps in here. So let's actually start with traversing uh, file system recursively, because this one I think is the easiest one. 
because I already know how to do that on Linux. On Linux, there is a thing called drent, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, drent. Uh, uh, yeah. And can I do a man page on drent? Uh, I didn't think so, but I know that one of the functions from drent is called open dir. There we go. So yeah, essentially you have to include drent. And the API is the following. You open a directory uh, with a particular name, right? You open a directory with, with a particular name and it gives you the handle. And uh, then you use other functions from drent, uh, like read dir, I think, uh, read dir. And it returns you a pointer to um, sort of like the next entry within the directory, right? It's the next entry within the directory. And uh, within that directory, you can know the name of the file, uh, maybe some sort of a type of the file and whatnot, uh, some additional information. And uh, that can help you to recurse, uh, re like recursively traverse this entire stuff. And after you are done, you can close the directory. Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward API. Um, so let's actually start by looking at the current folder, right? Mm, 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 mm. So open dir. Right, this is going to be dir, uh, and uh, this is going to be the name. And if this entire thing failed, right? So as far as I know, it may fail. Uh, and what does it return? Uh, it returns. Uh, on error it returns null and error no is set appropriately. Okay, so let's do something like uh, f print f uh, std error um, could not um, maybe let's actually do something like this error could not open directory uh, s uh, because of s right so and uh, let's create something like this dear path right so this is going to be dot for now uh, dear path and here we're going to use dear path and the entire thing the entire thing is, is going to be located in here it's a error error no uh, there we go and then we're going to exit with just one there we go and at the end we supposed to close the directory right so we're closing the directory everything should be fine uh, okay, and then uh, we start reading the entire thing. So read dir returns a pointer to dir structure. Uh, next directory, it returns null uh, on reaching the end of the directory stream or if an error occurred. Okay, this one is actually interesting. So read dir may return an error, right? But in both of the cases, whether it reached the end or uh, it hit the error, it will return null. So you have to check the error no. Because of that, you have to clean the error no uh, before even trying to do anything. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. Um, a lot of, you know, Postix um, C APIs are like that. So there's nothing much you can do about that. Just a second. So, excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so... So this is the entry and we have to provide the uh, handle that we got in here. Uh, and uh, while this entire thing is not equal to null, uh, I suppose what we can do, we can just print the, uh, the file names, right? So uh, file as entry and in here, uh, what we're going to do. Mm -mm -mm. So where is the entry? Uh, it's a pointer and the name is D name. Okay, and the name could not be longer than 256 for some reason um, Right I wonder if you have you can have files longer than 256 is that is that the thing that you can do so? Uh, 256 so that's the basically 256 uh, Characters can I create a file of such size? so if I touch this thing uh, file name too long? Oh, that is very interesting. So there is some sort of limitation on uh, like a Linux system and whatnot. That is very interesting. I didn't know that. I don't know why I didn't know that, but 256, uh, looking at the length of this name, I would say 256 characters is a reasonable, um, you know, limitation for the file name. And even though I have 256 uh, characters, right, 
256 characters, just a second. Um, right, and here I still cannot create 256 um, character file name, probably because one of the characters here is reserved for null. Yeah, it's null terminated, right? So it, effectively what it has in here is to, uh, 255, right? So let's actually try to touch such file again. Uh, you can do that, but if I remove one single character, it should be able to create. There we go. So <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Um, all right. And I wonder if that's the limitation specifically of Linux or of touch itself. This is actually a very interesting question. Right. Uh, so whose limitation is that? Whose limitation is that? Is it possible for me to just go ahead and create such file uh, somewhere in here? Uh, let me try to compile the entire thing. Uh, so, error, could not open unknown, escape sequence. I cannot see shit in this mist. Yeah, okay, so this is supposed to be uh, slash n. Hopefully that will work. Uh, so let's actually compile everything in here. So we're gonna have a string dot h, uh, error no. Uh, oh my god. Okay, so everything seems to be okay. So it's already kind of working. We just don't advance the uh, the thingy in here. Um, okay, so dear path passing uh, dear. Do we have any other things in here? Uh -huh. Okay, fine, it compiles. So the thing I wanted to do in here is just uh, do something like this. Right? And uh, file, let's do it like that. F open uh, file, right, we have 256 characters in here, right? And I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. Uh, and we're gonna see if uh, I can even open such file for writing, right? Mm, 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 mm. So it's going to be f print f stdr could not open file because s str error uh -huh. uh, uh, no okay. cool. mm. uh huh so this has to be a pointer. File too long. Did you look at that? So the seal runtime actually straight up tells us that yeah, you can create such thing. So there is actual limitation on Linux uh, for the size of the file. And to be fair, 256 sounds like a reasonable limitation because it's a pretty long goddamn file. All right. So nice to know. I guess we learned something. I learned something. So maybe you already knew that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, go. So, what do we have to do in here? Um, then, after we printed the file, what I need to do, I need to take the next, um, you know, the next entry. And I have to keep repeating this entire stuff. And uh, if error no not equal to zero, after this entire thing, what I have to do, I have to, uh, you know, throw an error. Uh, error could not read uh, directory s because of s right so and this is going to be dear path and uh, str error error no and we're going to exit with the one there we go there we go and undefined main because i renamed main to main two because i was experimenting there we go so this is the files that we have <laughs> i really like that a uh this long file actually sneaked in there but yeah so essentially um yeah you can iterate through all the files but this entire thing does not iterate the file system recursively if you know what i'm talking about right so um just a second all right so it doesn't iterate it recursively uh so and this is something that we'll have to do ourselves i suppose um, so also it includes like this dot and dot dot files, which you probably want to ignore. Uh, so what people usually do, right? So they straight up just check if this entire thing is uh, ignorable or not. Uh, as far as I know, the easiest way to ignore this entire thing is to take a look at the first character. And if the first character is a dot, right, just basically ignore this entire thing. 
And this is might be the reason why on Unix the convention is if the file starts with the dot, it's an invisible file, right? Because it's just easier to ignore uh, also the current folder and the the parent folder or something. Or maybe it's the other way around because there is a convention of dot being invisible character and uh, dot. Uh, denoting an invisible file, the names of uh, current folder and the parent folder are the dots. So it could be the other way around. Doesn't really matter, to be fair. Uh, anyway, so how would you recursively traverse this entire thing? Well, that's a good question, my friend. Uh, so since it's a recursive, a recursive traversal, we need to create a recursive function, right? Uh, so uh, let's call it something like print uh, files recursively. But I'm not actually sure, because when you have a recursive function, it makes it kind of difficult to customize the action that you want to perform on each individual file, uh, which is usually resolved in function programming languages by using higher order functions, right? Um, so let's actually implement this function, and I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. Uh, actually, before I'm going to implement it, uh, let's make a small break, and uh, I just want to like refill my cup of tea, and then we're going to continue implementing the, the recursive function. Um, all right, uh, let's continue. Let's first implement this function, right, uh, recursively, uh, like in a very naive way. Uh, so I'm, it's, the function is going to accept the directory path, right? So this is the directory path. And this is where we're going to do the entire process of like opening and closing and so on and so forth. So I'm going to move this entire thing in here and uh, let's quickly do that. So print files recursively. Uh, right. So this is going to be something like that. So, and for each individual file, right, we probably need to check the type of the file, right? So, and I wonder if I can uh, get the type of the file from here. So, uh, type of file not supported by all file uh, system types. Okay, so maybe it is supported by um, XT4. So, um, let me see. So this field contains a value indicating the file type, making it possible to avoid the expensive calling of lstat, which is actually preferable uh, if further uh, actions depend on the type of the file, uh, depend on the type of the file. When a suitable feature macro test is defined, uh, default source on the PC, over the source on the PC, GLPC defines the following macro constants. Uh, DTBLK, it's a block device directory, um and maybe that's the only thing that we need in here so how do i use this macros currently only some file system among them btrsfs xt x34 uh, full support for returning the file type in the dtype all uh, applications must properly handle the return of uh, dt unknown so I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to use that. Do I just compare it against this macro or I uh, sort of do something like uh, ENT D type and it returns true? To be fair, probably not uh, because a file probably cannot be simultaneously a directory and uh, FIFO, right? So I suppose like it's one of those types. Uh, following macro const macro constants. Okay, so they specifically say they are constants. Okay, that's that's fine. Uh, right. So and uh, we can do actually the following thing. Right. So I'm gonna do something like uh, if this entire thing is a directory. In that case, I'm gonna say uh, dir. Right. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna say it's a file. Right. So that way we can easily distinguish between them. Uh, all right, so if I try to compile and run the entire thing, uh, dtdir is not defined because it was already mentioned in the uh, in the documentation. Uh, when suitable feature macro is defined, default source on glibc or bsd source on glibc versions. Um, so we have to define bsd source. Is that what we have to do? I, I never understood these macros, but I can do that. Uh, fine, just fine, and there we go, so something went wrong. So BSD source and are deprecated, use default sourced. Uh, okay, sure, if that's what you want. Um, so probably misread the documentation a little bit, happens sometimes. Okay, so we're quite clearly distinguishing this kind of stuff, and maybe I would like to create like SRC folder. Uh, to test this kind of stuff a little bit better, right? So, and I'm gonna put main into SRC, 
Uh, right. So, and let me try to run that. And uh, there we go. Here we have SRC, and we can quite easily distinguish between like directory and not directory. Uh, so that's cool. That is very, very cool. So, and uh, if this is a directory, if this is a directory, what we want to do in here, we actually want to concatenate uh, dear path and uh, this thing, like so, and call print uh, files recursively, recursively, <laughs> right? So that's what we want to be able to do in here, right? Um, so actually we want to like join the paths, right? Join uh, path. Uh, and I wonder what's going to be the easiest way to do all of that. Maybe we can implement uh, such function like a join path. Uh, so it's going to be char uh, join path. And this is going to be something like const char uh, base, uh, const char um, file. I don't know. Uh, so and we're just going to implement all of that. So interesting enough, uh, the join path is probably going to be implemented through allocating the memory. So because it's going to be easiest at the time, uh, even though I do not particularly like uh, this sort of way of managing memory, it's like super easy to do so. Mm. This right now. Uh, so maybe later I'm going to actually make it a little bit better. Um, so let's implement something like uh, child path, right? So we're gonna pass it in there, and then I'm gonna do child path like this, and after that I'm gonna free the child path, right? There we go. So and in here we're going to simply uh, calculate the lengths of those things. So we're gonna have base length, which is str length of the base, uh, right? And then we're gonna have something like file length. And we want to allocate the results. So this is going to malloc, uh, and this is essentially base land by files land plus one, right? For for the null termination. Uh, and if result is something like null, we'll have to crash, of course. Uh, might as well actually assert that because I don't think it makes sense to like properly and extensively, uh, you know, handle these kind of situations on the modern machines, right? So because of the virtual memory and stuff like that. Um, so now we're going to be doing mem copy um, result base len. Oh, to be fair, like I also need to plus one for the for the delimiter, right? So, so rather path separator, right? So let's do something like a path separator length, and we're going to define like a constant for that. So path separator length is going to be one. Um, to be fair, we can do something like path uh, path separator, and it's going to be like a slash. And here we're going to have size of the path separator, but minus one because uh, the um, size of a string literal will return length of the string plus one because of the null terminator, right? So you have to be aware of that. So we copy in this thing base length and stuff like that. Mm. So I'm just thinking what's going to be the easiest way to approach this entire thing uh, because um, we want to return the result. But on top of that, I also want to have some sort of a, like a cursor, um, something like end, right? right. And then here I'm going to be mem copying uh, base into the end and then I'm going to be adding the length of this thing to the end right and that will make it easier to then mem copy more stuff in here like path separator uh path separator length right and then it's going to just plus so as you can see it's it makes it super easy to sort of append things uh, at the end uh and then we are mem copying it uh copying and uh, file uh, file uh, file length right and then end plus uh, file length and as you can see we added up all of this length and also plus one which means at the end of this entire thing I can just add the null terminator and uh, then I can discard the end and only return the result so interesting enough to make it sort of consistent I can even call this something like uh, begin 
right? So as you can see, this is the beginning of the result. Uh, and then I assign N to the beginning and then I just append things uh, by mem copying them and then shifting them. And then I just return the begin. So that's the function that we probably wanna have in here. Not the function we deserve, but the function we need for sure. Okay, so we can test how this function works. Uh, so let me quickly just create uh, a new main. So, and let's say that we have two things. So the base is going to be a full bar, right? And the file is going to be something like hello world. Uh, hello world. And I want to print this entire thing. All right, so join. Uh, path base file of course that will leak a little bit of memory but that's fine for such a small simple program so don't worry about it don't even worry about it no target specified i think i'm in the wrong folder uh a boom and something went wrong okay so assert is not included let's include assert uh okay assertion begin equal no it has to be not equal to null. there we go so as you can see we successfully uh concatenated these two things okay that is cool that is cool uh so let's remove that so our join path function works successfully and as you can see we're calling this entire thing recursively um okay so if this is a directory we probably don't want to go uh to dot and dot dot directories right so we need to make sure that um there the file like the d name is not equal to dot and double dot uh, so let me see. So we know for sure that this is a directory and if nt dname uh, strcmp dot not equal to zero and this entire thing not equal to dot dot only then it makes sense to do the recursive traversal. Okay, cool. So, and what this entire thing is going to do, right, it is going to start at the dot, right, start at the dot, and uh, traverse everything recursively. It will not only print what's inside of this folder, but it will also try to go inside of the SRC, right. Uh, not quite sure what's the best way to print this entire stuff, because you see, we're only printing the file names, so it would be nice to actually you know, do something like uh, dear path, right? Something like dear path. Um, mm -mm -mm. Oh, by the way, I wanted to actually put it to do in here. Uh, something like to do avoid, avoid using malloc in here, right? So right now I just don't want to think about, uh, you know, not using malloc, but uh, maybe in the future to simplify the API, we don't really want to use malloc directly. Uh, okay, so um, here is the thing. So as you can see, we managed to go uh, to this entire thing traversally. Uh, not to say, by the way, that using malloc is bad, right? So there are situations when you want to use malloc and just right now, um, you can actually come up with a simpler approach that doesn't involve malloc and all the complications of mallocing and freeing stuff around, right? But I don't want to think about it right now, so I just going to use malloc. But I'm just saying, I'm being aware that there is a better way to do that that does not involve the complexity of managing the memory, right? That's what I'm saying. So I'm never saying that it is bad to use something. I'm just saying in that particular situation, it couldn't be. It could have been implemented a little bit uh, easier. I, I don't know why I feel the need to like defend this kind of thing. It's just like you know, Twitch chat is getting into my head. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. Um, um, so what I was thinking about, uh, I wanted to have like a bigger file tree, right? So I wanted to have a bigger file tree. Uh, so maybe something like a foo inside of here we could have uh, something like bar uh, so in the folder buzz and in here we could have something like touch hello and maybe even touch world right touch hello and touch world so as you can see we have all of these things and if i try to run this entire thing as you can see we're traversing everything recursively right so we're starting at the current folder and we are iterating through each individual file in here uh, which is quite cool. So, yes, 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 kawaii freaking death. Um, so, let's do a committee committee, I suppose, uh, because we managed to actually do this entire thing 
recursively, but not fully. Um, but yeah. And here is the problem that I was talking about. Obviously, we don't want to pr just print the files, right? We don't want to just print the files. Uh, but the entire function kind of makes it difficult to customize what sort of action you want to perform on the file. Right. Uh, in functional programming languages, um, usually people resolve this by uh, accepting a function, right? So something like uh, file action, right? So this is the file action uh, function, uh, file action. And the file action could be something like type def void uh, file action uh, which accepts a const char file path or whatnot right so here's your file action and instead of printing this entire thing you would do something like uh, file uh, action you will probably have to join this entire thing right join uh, path right and maybe just maybe it would make sense to actually do that you know, somewhere here, because we're starting to reuse child path in both of the branches of the if condition. So it would make sense to do something like this, right? Uh, right, so file action, um, child path, right? So here's a child path, which we uh, check that if it's a directory, um, right, check it's not equal to dot, 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 and then we print this kind of thing like this. And here we perform the action. So this is how functional programming people like to solve this thing, right? Um, and they usually design the languages where doing this kind of thing makes it easier, right? So you have Lambda uh, syntax and so on and so forth. So it makes it super easy to just, um, you know, um, how can we do that? Um, maybe we can call it something like visit uh, files, right? Visit files. So in here you would do something like dot and in C++ you would be able to do something like const char file path. Right, and then you would um, you would do it like that, right? And uh, quite often in this particular situation, you want to be able to sort of access the memory outside of such lambda, right? So if you have some sort of a counter, you want to be able to increment this counter, and because of that, the count has to be captured into this entire thing. So that's why it's called, it's called closure. You enclose. Uh, the variables into the closure and then you pass it into this uh, function that calls this function so this is the very functional programming way of solving this problem of customizing the action that you want to perform on each individual file right but i think there is different way of uh customizing the action that you want to perform I'm not saying that it's better way, it's just different, right? And I've been doing functional programming for quite some time already, actually. I've been doing functional programming for, I would even say, way too long, right? So, and uh, I want to try different things. So, and in here, I think I know a way to make it different and more of an imperative way of customizing such function. Essentially, to customize the, um, the action that you want to perform in the function, you want to get rid of the recursion. So, and the question is, how can you uh, get rid of the recursion in a recursive algorithm? In a recursive algorithm. Well, the only reason why do you need to use recursion in this particular specific case is because you want to maintain a stack of, uh, the, uh, of the directory descriptors. Right. So, and essentially what you're doing in here, you're abusing the call stack to store the directory descriptors on it. Right. What if we create a data structure of some sort of a, like, um, I don't know. Um, so this is called dir, and I'm going to call it a rec dir, um, basically a recursive dir. Right. And this uh, recursive dir is going to uh, consist of this stack of those things so it's going to be deers and uh here we're going to have a deers capacity and here we're going to have a deers size right here we're going to have a deers size and uh essentially um we're not only um hmm. yeah, yeah so essentially we're going to be uh, maintaining that uh stack and we're going to have uh like a function uh, that gets us the next entry in here right so it's actually 
Okay, so we can even make the API look exactly like DRAND API, but in a recursive fashion. Okay, so we can even do something. This is actually very interesting. So open uh, a rec dir, right? So we can have something like this, open rec dir, which will accept uh, const char uh, dir path, right? And it will return you rec uh, dir pointer, right? Then we're gonna have close uh, rec dir, which will accept this you know, thing. So since we're following like a style of uh, DRAND, I might as well actually get rid of the underscore in here. Uh, this is a close DRAND, uh, but I'm not sure if close uh, dir uh, returns any ints. So apparently it does uh, return some ints. Right. This is going to be that. Uh, uh, a rec dir, uh, rec dir p. And then uh, we're going to be returning the rent, uh, the rent entry um, for read rec dir, and it will accept rec dir, uh, rec dir p. Uh, right. So, and the idea here is that you just use it as a regular API in here, as a regular um, DRENT API, except it will. Uh, traverse all of the files recursively for you, right? So you would do something like rec dir, um, you know, dir open, <sighs> open rec dir is going to be dot. Uh, and then uh, you want to do something like struct dir and entry, read rec uh, dir, uh, dir, uh, while entry not equal to null. And this is where you want to perform your action on the file, right? This is where you want to perform the action on your file, like this, right? So essentially, you're taking this entire function and put it uh, inside out, uh, actually exposing the, the file action that you want to perform, right? So you see, there, there is no recursion in here. The stack is maintained explicitly and the action becomes obviously customizable. So by wrapping everything in the function, it makes it difficult to customize certain parts of the functions. And that's why you need to like poke holes into abstraction to actually customize things. And you poke the holes while uh, passing like, higher order functions. But here, if you uh, turn the architecture inside out, the customizable parts become visible and you can just like inject the action that you want to do in here, right? So, and as you can see, you don't need to think about like closures or enclosing the things. Like if you want to have a counter, remember how we had a counter, right? Uh, you can just, you can just do it like that. You don't have to, you know, uh, enclose anything or capture anything and you don't need any special uh, mechanisms of the language to do that. So the only thing we need to implement, we need to implement this API that manages uh, the stack explicitly and just see how, you know, how easy it will be to implement. So uh, again, I'm not saying that this is the best way to do this kind of things. It's a different way of doing things and it doesn't require any special features from the language to solve the problem, right? The problem, as already stated, is customizing the, uh, the action that you want to perform on the file while traversing everything recursively, right? Functional programming uh, requires special uh, features from the language, but if you turn it up inside out, it doesn't need those features anymore. So so let's just go ahead and try to do that because I think it's an interesting case that we could study and maybe we can learn something by uh, implementing this entire thing. I never implemented a, a such style of, of iterator over the, um, you know, directors. So it's going to be really interesting for me to do so. Uh, but I think we're going to do that after a very small break uh, because I do need to, to make a break because I'm talking too much. So, yeah. All right, uh, let's go ahead and implement this API. Um, so we're going to start with open rec dir. So we're also going to stab the rest of these things, uh, just in case. Uh, and this one is going to be null. So maybe for now, I'm also going to mark some of these arguments are as unused. Um, rec dir p and this one is going to be void uh, rec dir p so let's actually make sure that our code compiles because i've been doing some experimentations in here right 
Um, to, 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 to. So this one is going to be file, right? So I want to keep the code in a compilable state. So let's get rid of all of that. Um, here is the child path. Uh, to, 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 to. Okay, so let's actually try to recompile the entire thing and we don't have a dear scap. So the capacity of the director is, um, let's say that it's going to be like around 1024. Why not? So it's going to be a relatively big number. Uh, so print files recursively and I renamed this entire thing to visit files. Sure. Um, so might as well actually rename it everywhere. Visit files. Uh, boom. Uh, there we go. Seems to be working. Everything, you know, uh, works as it was before. So let's try to implement that API. Um, okay, so we need to open Deer. So since it's going to be mimicking the Deer Rand API, right, uh, we need to allocate this structure on the heap, right? So uh, we're going to be doing it like that. Deer, um, rec Deer. So this is going to be like malloc size of rec Deer. There we go. And of course, we're going to be assuming that that succeeded, right? So. Uh, after that, I suppose we need to mem set this entire thing to zero. Zero initialize this entire stuff. There we go. And uh, we need to open the first directory, right? So we need to open the first directory. Um, I suppose we're going to be doing it like this, uh, where we take the dir. Um, let's actually call it a rec dir to not confuse with the regular directories. So this is going to be just a rec dir. Uh, rec dir dirs zero and here we are actually making an assumption a very important assumption that can break uh, static assert uh, we're making an assumption that dirs cap is uh, greater than zero so the reason why i want to capture this assumption is because maybe in the future is somebody's going to be screwing up with this uh, macro right and at some point accidentally maybe they will set it to zero i'm not sure if it will actually happen but i can imagine and uh, that will automatically break this particular place and it would be nice to actually catch that at compile time which is rather interesting this is something that could be caught at compile time Though, uh, maybe because of this setting this entire thing to zero, uh, this particular part is not going to compile. So I'm not sure how valid this concern is, but I'm going to add this static assert here just in case. I don't know, <laughs> because I am like that. <laughs> I am weird like that. Uh, so open deer. So we have to provide the deer path, right? Um, and if this entire thing um, returned null, well, we basically failed, and I suppose we'll have to free the allocated uh, rec deer and automatically return null. There we go. So that's what we'll have to do. If it succeeded, uh, we'll need to set um, um, rec deer deer's size deer size to uh, deer's size. Oh boy, what, we're, what are we setting it to? We're setting it to one, right? So because we uh, initialized the first directory and this is essentially the stack of directories that we're maintaining, right? And uh, we essentially pushed uh, like a first directory to our stack, which is rather interesting. Maybe that basically means that I need to have a special function for pushing things onto the stack of the directories. This is actually rather interesting. So it would, it would actually make sense. Uh, something like uh, int, um, because it may fail. Rec dir uh, push, right? And you would do something like a dir path, right? So you would do something like dir path. And this is where you would put this entire thing, right? So, and essentially, and such, essentially, uh, you do something like this. You open the directory, um, right? Uh, so I don't just don't like how big this entire thing is, but maybe that's fine. And the problem here is that I have to like sort of um, duplicate this entire stuff. But maybe that's fine, right? So this entire thing is supposed to be a pointer, but I can do something like dear pointer pointer, right? And this is going to be the current dear that I'm sort of working with. 
right? And in here, I'll have to do plus plus. So I'm basically allocating the first thing. And this static assert becomes kind of obsolete and it becomes a runtime assert where you essentially asserting that, all right, uh, rec dear, uh, rec dear, you're asserting that rec dear dear's size is less than dear's capacity right so it becomes a runtime assert rather than the compile time one uh okay so we're allocating a new directory this entire thing if we dereference it if it's null uh we don't have really have to clean everything in here which makes the management a little bit easier which is nice Right, and in here we can return minus one if something went wrong. So we don't have to increment this entire thing because that's basically it. And we just return zero, right? Okay, so yeah, here we check if we even have a capacity for, uh, for the directory on the stack. Then we allocate a new directory in the stack. We open that directory. If it failed, uh, we basically return uh, minus one, otherwise return zero. So we don't have to do anything special in here. So uh, when I'm opening the uh, the rec directory, I am I'm, I'm I'm allocating the uh, memory for that, and then I do rec dir push, and uh, I do rec dir dir path, and this is the first directory where I pushed all of that. If this entire process has failed for whatever reason. I'm freeing rec dir. Um, I'm not even sure if it's a wise idea to free it because maybe it would make sense to actually close it. Maybe I need to do something like close uh, rec dir, right? And after that, uh, I just need to return uh, rec dir. Um, actually, no. And here we're going to return rec dir. Okay, so that seems pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, I think it is pretty straightforward, but maybe it also makes sense to start extracting uh, sort of this uh, recursive directory management uh, system into like a separ separate translation unit, right? So to not keep it in the same file. Um, but maybe not, I don't know. So maybe we're going to do that later because um, I feel like I'm going to be reusing functions you know, between each other. Uh, open rec deer already kind of uh, tries to reuse the closed deer. But to be fair, maybe it shouldn't be using closed deer because I know for sure that just freeing is sufficient enough. Like I'm in a context where it does make sense. Okay, I don't have to worry about that. All right, whatever. So uh, we open the recursive directory. Now, how do you close the recursive directory? Well, uh, so to close the recursive directory, we need to iterate through each individual directory in the stack and close them, right? So we need to close them all. So I'm going to be doing something like size t i less than rec dir p, uh, and it's going to be dir's size plus plus i, and uh, we're going to do close dir. Um, hmm, interestingly enough, so close dir may also fail, but in which case it does fail. I wonder if it fails for uh, using incorrect thing. Uh, return zero and success, minus one, return, uh, I don't know, is that a problem? In invalid file discrete. Okay, so it may fail only because of the programmer's error, right? So we just need to make sure that we never try to feed an incorrect uh, directory descriptor into it. So, which is fair enough. Okay, that, that is in fact fair enough. Um, interestingly enough, uh, to actually ensure that, we want to do something like, yeah, we want to move this process of incrementing uh, the size of the stack after we check that there's no errors while pushing a new directory. Yeah, so here is we're locating this entire thing. Now, now we'll make sure that everything's opened and only then we're incrementing and that way we're never going to have invalid thing on the stack. Okay, that makes sense. Um, all right, so close dear, and then I do something like um, mm -mm -mm, rec dear p uh, dears i. So, and I know for sure that this should not return uh, a negative number, right? And I might as well actually assert that because it is very important for us as the designers of this library that this never happens it should always return zero so if it doesn't return zero that means we made a mistake somewhere in those functions right we don't want to propagate this error up to the user because it's our mistake if this uh if this became negative um okay so close zero in here 
Uh, and then, um, let me see, I want to just free uh, rec DRP, and that should be fine. Right, freeing things does not really uh, return any errors, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, let me just take a look. Yeah, freeing never fails, so I can just free this entire thing, which means that I don't even have to report any error. Okay, so that's fine. So because any error in here means that we made mistake in those implementations. So that makes sense to me, actually. Okay, that's totally fine. That is in fact totally fine. So we successfully implemented opening the recursive directory and uh, closing the recursive directory, which is totally fine. All right, so what do we have in here? Uh, incompatible, so I have to take a pointer in here and there we go, everything seems to be working. Okay, so now the most important thing, uh, read rec directory. This one is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm 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 because we need to take a look at the top of the stack, right? Do we even have a top of the stack? That's a very important question. So do we even have enough of the directories uh, on, uh, on the stack? So if uh, we have greater than zero, that means we do have enough directories and here is the top of the stack, right? So this is gonna be something like uh, dears um, and this one is going to be minus one and we're going to take a pointer to this entire thing. Right. So here is the top of the directory stack. Otherwise, if we don't have anything in there, we straight up return null. There we go. Cool. All right. We do have a top of the stack. Uh, and uh, what I want to do, I want to call um, read dir on the top of the stack. Uh, so this is a wrong function, ring directory entry. Uh, so this looks interesting. What is that? Is that a, uh -huh. so it's a different one. I wonder if there's already like API in like a postix that allows you to recursively traverse directories. Maybe there is already something, uh, but I mean, we're already implementing our own thing, so it doesn't really matter in my opinion. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so here's the thing. So we take the entry um, right in here and um, we provide the top of the stack. What's interesting is that this thing may return uh, null, right? It may return null, but whether it's an error or end of the entry depends depends on uh, error null, right? So uh, we first have to set error null to zero to even call a red deer, right? Because it may return an error and it returns it via error null. Okay, so this entire thing um, returned null, right? So maybe the first thing we want to do here is basically check if it didn't return null, because in that case, it's super easy to just return that to the user. Right, there we go. So if it didn't return, um, you know, anything fishy, we just straight up give it to the user. All right. Otherwise, if it returned null, right, if it returned null, uh, if error null is not equal to zero, we straight up return null to the user, right? Uh, if it didn't return null, right, if it didn't return null, uh, that means we reached the end of that directory. We reached the end of that directory and we need to pop uh, the, um, um, the directory out of the stack and look for the entries in the uh, directory higher in the hierarchy. That's what we need to do. So to do uh, pop the directory, right pop the directory. So we already have a function for pushing a new directory, but now we need a function for popping the directory. How about that? So um, rec dir uh, pop. Uh, so we're gonna accept this entire thing. And I'm not sure if it, we're gonna actually return anything in here. That's a very interesting question. Mm. So what we're gonna do in here is just like, yeah, essentially decrement dir size right changing the top uh, to a higher in a hierarchy but it's quite important to assert that you don't try to call this function um, 
when you're equal to zero. So the size has to be greater than zero. Otherwise, you're going to have an underflow, right? Otherwise, you're going to have an underflow. Mm, and here is an interesting thing, right? You want to pop the directory, right? So uh, let me actually uh, do that quite. Well, well, no, 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 no. This is not correct. I made a oopsie doopsie and a little bit of a fucky wacky. You need to close the top of the stack. That's quite important. So what we need to do in here, I suppose, is just take a rec dear uh, dears right so this is going to be uh, the top of the stack and we need to close uh, the directory at the top of the stack so the directory is successfully closed and we know for a fact that it's um, it's a correct um, file descriptor uh, directory descriptor so we're going to assert that the return equal to uh, zero in here so we're closing this entire thing and then we need to decrement your size but maybe uh, one of the things we can do in here we can decrement it in line right uh, like so and that's fine that is totally fine okay so what we need to do in this particular case right what we need to do we need to do rec dear pop right uh rec dear pop um and we provide just a rec dear p and after that we need to try again uh, this entire process right so we need to try again look at the top of the directory right see if it's correct or not then uh, get the next entry from the directory and uh, so on and so forth if you know what i'm talking about <clears throat> so on and so forth so Essentially, what I'm trying to say is that we have to basically go to into here, right? So something like that. Mm -hmm. Go to try again, right? So we reach the point where you want to go back in here. But the question is, can you organize all of that in a form of a loop? That's a very interesting question. Is it possible to organize all of that in the form of a loop? Well, you kind of can. Um, right, I suppose um, you can make this something like while, right? You can try to make this something like while. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. And we also didn't check another case, by the way. We didn't check another case. Let's actually go back to uh, here. Uh, try again, right? So this is a try again. So, and here, here we have another case. If entry is not equal to null, we return it right away to the user. But I don't think it's the right thing to do, right? Because what we need to check in here, we need to check that it's a directory, right? So we can take a look at the uh, D type, right? If the D type is DT uh, directory, right? And strcmp, well, it's rather interesting. So if it's a directory, right, if it's a directory and ntd name, ntd name uh, strcmp is equal to dot and strcmp uh, ntd name equal to dot dot, right. In that case, we need to skip this entire thing which means we have to try again right, right. so we want to skip this entire stuff uh, if it's not equal to that we may want to return that to the user right we may want to return that um, well not true we don't want to return that to the user we want to push that thing right we want to do a uh, rec dear push a uh, rec dear p and we're pushing that new thing. So we have to do ENT D name, um, join path, join path. And we need to have like the base path, the directory path. Uh, none of these things we have, right? We don't have a dear path. Uh, and also we need a way to keep track of this path and actually remove it. But in any case, uh, after we uh, sort of push that director in here, we have to go again, uh, go ahead and try again for that new already pushed directory, right? So that's essentially what we need to do in here. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. So I think I covered 
all of the possible uh, control flows. So it may look a little bit scary and um, unclear, but what you see in here is that we covered all of the possible cases, all of the possible control flows, right? So here we have this condition. So uh, then branch is here and um, else branch it just basically returns null. Uh, within this entire thing, we have another condition. It's either that or that. Right, uh, and within each individual thing in here, you see all of the, um, you know, control flows are sort of covered, so you don't have to worry about that. The thing here is that can we get rid of the go to, right? Uh, I'm not even sure if doing go to like that even works, so I put go to here like conceptually, right? So this is like conceptually. I think we can quite easily get rid of the go to if we replace this thing with while and all of the go to's essentially become continue right so yeah so you just replace all of that with the continue and there you go and since we don't have a while anymore we're gonna return like this so essentially this becomes a loop which just loops and tries to get the next entry while you have something on the top of the stack you see, while they have something on the top of the stack, we constantly try to just uh, take the next entry from the from the top of the stack. So and uh, then we get the top of the stack. We clean the error no because um, the error no may return something. We read the entry. Entry is not equal to null, and it is directory, right? And uh, it is actually dot and dot dot. In that case, well, sorry, next one. Um, okay. So the directory was not dot and dot dot. Well, we need to push it onto the stack. Try again on the new directory on the stack, right? So and um, if this is not a directory, right? If it's, this is not a directory, we right away return from the not only loop, but also a function, uh, right? Given that entry to the user. That's what we're doing in here, right? So, uh, okay, so the entry turned out to be null. In case of error no not equal uh, zero, right? That means uh, an error has happened and we have to report that to the user too. So we instantly return null and let the user know that, well, uh, something uh, wrong has happened. Error no turned out to be zero. That means we reached the end of the directory. We pop the directory out and we try again on the top of the stack. Okay, so everything works out quite beautifully. Uh, the only problem here, here is that I started actually inverting the conditions in here. So it would be better to actually invert everything back, um, right? So if you do have an entry, right, if you do have an entry, you're going to do this branch instead. And this is going to be the, uh, the different branch, right? Mm, wait. No, everything was fine, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, okay, so that's fine. So you have an entry and this is a directory, otherwise you don't have an entry. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> So I have a brain fart. So maybe I want to invert something in here. So if error uh, no, well, I, I guess it's fine. If error no, you return null because it's an error. Otherwise, you pop this entire thing. Uh, okay, looks like it works out quite beautifully, right? If you don't have anything on the top of the stack, it's straight up null. There's nothing much you can do about it. And uh, again, I suppose... Uh, redirect dear also may return errors why error no so it probably it uh, that means i have to clean it up before in here just in case and uh, i'll have to keep cleaning it up on each individual situation so the, the thing is if i don't clean it up here and i end up with a uh, reg dear p that is that has an empty empty stack uh, that means uh, I may potentially return, uh, you know, null and also set error null to not zero. So I think it makes sense to clean it up here and clean it on each individual iteration in here. I think it does make sense to do that. <clears throat> All right, that's pretty cool. So the only problem we have in here is that how do we handle memory and join path and some other bullshit? So you see, this is the problem with malloc, right? <laughs> The malloc introduces additional complexity that you have to constantly think about, right? You have to constantly think about, okay, you, you malloc, now you have to delegate. So maybe, um, I don't know, what, what we can do in here? We can keep track of these paths somehow, or, or um, 
I don't know, we can have a buffer where we keep the current path. This is actually very interesting. We could uh, keep track of the, you know, the path buffer or something. So uh, something like a path and it's going to have like a particular size. Right. So do we have something like a max path? Is there a limitation? So there is a limitation on the uh, size of the file name in Linux as far as I know. But is there a limitation on the path? There should be something. There should be something. We can set it to maximum path. And I do quite remember uh, that there was something. C uh, max path. Uh, so is there equivalent of WinIP's max path under Linux Unix? Okay, Windows has that. Uh, path max. Okay. Uh, so standard version of this function is broken by design since it's impossible to determine a suitable size for output buffers or according to buffer size path as a suffix, but path box need to be defined constant and may have to be obtained using path config. Oh, it's rather a runtime thing. Okay. It's more of a runtime thing. All right, that's very interesting. So path conf, conf. What is a path conf? It's actually very interesting. So get configuration values for files. Gets available configuration option name for file path. Uh, and what name could be equal to? Um, path max the maximum length of a relative path when path or fd is the current working directory oh shit this is <laughs> oh boy oh boy oh boy this is this is pretty sus not gonna lie okay let's not go in there so maybe on top of the like storing deers in here we might as well also store paths if you know what i'm talking about right deers cap uh, and maybe this is not going to be dear scab anymore, so it's going to be some something like um, rec dear stack cup. Yeah, so uh, this is basically our stack and each individual frame. So this is two parallel arrays. Uh, each frame contains a single directory and its corresponding path. That's what we have in here. And when we push in this thing in here, we also push in the dear path associated with it. Uh, so interestingly enough, so when I open uh, the rec directory, this path is not really manageable by us. It's manageable by somebody else. So we'll probably have to duplicate that string. So do we have a str dupe? Uh, duplicate the string. So I think I'm going to do str dupe in here, right? So this is what we're going to have in here. So we duplicate the string. And now this is the string that we'll have to uh, manage, right? So this is the string that we'll have to manage. Uh, so this is the dear. Uh, let's put it this way. I suppose this is going to be char uh, path uh, rec dear dears. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't keep this as a parallel array. Maybe that's a bad idea. What if we just had a, like a rec deer a frame where you have the deer and the path? If you know what I'm talking about, is that a is that a good idea to have something like that? And then we could have a rec deer frame. All right, uh, frame stack and rec deer stack capacity. So we explicitly have the stack and we explicitly have the stack size. So that way it's relatively easy to not confuse things around, right? So let's implement it this way. What do you guys think? There's nobody to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just realized the sadness of the situation, me streaming alone uh, and then asking nobody, right, what do, what do you think? Well, and nobody to answer. That's, that's fine. Anyways, uh, so a third stack size uh, is going to be that. So let's actually go through all of the, so all of the things in here. Uh, so push. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So we can call it something like a rec uh, dear frame. Uh, it's going to be top stack. Mm -hmm. Then uh, here I can do something like top deer. So we opened the deer in here. Uh, we opened the deer. And if the deer turn out to be that, uh, what do we want to do in here actually? 
So who manages the memory for this thing in case of a failure? That's the cool question. <laughs> I suppose uh, we, like dear, uh, Rec Dear Push, is the one who's responsible for managing that thing, so we're gonna free this thing then. Uh, right, if it's equal to no, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we free everything, so nothing ever happened. Uh, in case of a success, we, do, we just do plus plus, okay. So, and another thing we'll have to do is that um, top um, path, it has to be equal to dear path and because of that i can finally can finally do something like this it's going to be path uh you know what what if i do something like path and then top path and if this entire thing turned out to be null uh right turn out to be null only then i do top path as well so is that a more readable way of doing that? Okay, so I'm taking the new top uh, and I'm, yeah, do path, deer, open deer, and so on and so forth. And then plus plus. Okay, I, I guess I guess it's fine. So I don't want to rat hole on this function for too long. Uh, stack size. Uh, and this is the stack size. Okay. What else do we have in here? When I do pop, right, so I'm going to be doing that. And uh, this is... Uh, where we have to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to extract the top of the stack, uh, like so. So here's the top of the stack, and I'm closing the directory at the top of the stack, right? So this is going to be dear. And I make sure that uh, this never returns zero, otherwise we did a fucky wacky in some of the functions. Uh, let's, let's not actually do that on a single line. And after that, I also need to free the uh, path, right? Because we are managing this entire thing. And then I need to decrement the stack size, right? So decrement the stack size. But again, I feel like it's totally fine to do that in line. I don't know why I don't want to do that in line, but yeah. Uh, what else do we have in here? So while we have something on the stack, right? Uh, rec dear. Uh, frame top uh, is going to be equal to just, I suppose, that uh -huh, stack. So this is the top of the stack. As you can see, so we're still managing the stack. We're just managing the stack explicitly. That's what we're doing, right? Uh, but that makes it architecturally a little bit more like easier to work with for some situations. Not for all the situations, but for some situations. Okay, so here what I can do is I say uh, top path, I join this stuff and I join these two things together. Okay, that's cool. Uh, dear, um, dear size, so then I, if I close everything, you know what, this is actually very interesting. Uh, to close everything, I think it would be easier to do something like while rec dear p stack size is greater than zero, uh, rec dear uh, pop. And that should clean up everything. And after everything is cleaned up, we can free the structure that was allocated by this entire stuff. Okay, so we implemented the, uh, the API. Uh, that is uh, re tra recursively traversing everything, but without using explicit recursion. Okay, so we turned the architecture inside out. That was actually a very interesting exercise. I'm not saying that you have to do that, and that's the best and the, uh, the only way to do things. I just personally wanted to try it out, right? So, and uh, also because it actually avoids the, the need for this, like, uh, you know, function that you have to inject in there because now you can just iterate this uh, tree structure um, sort of in a flat manner like you can just iterate it one by one uh, so I just wanted to try that but I'm not even sure if this entire thing works properly so <laughs> we'll see uh, we'll see we'll uh, see mm -mm. Mm -hmm. okay that's very interesting. Uh, so let's maybe... So this entire thing also returns you the the entry. That's what's interesting about that, right? It returns you the entry. But is that really what you care about? Uh, do we want to return the entry or do we want to return something else? 
because we are we care about the current path actually we we care about the full current path so maybe it doesn't really matter right okay well, let's let's make a small break and uh after the break we're gonna uh, continue working on this stuff um all right so you know what i want to do i want to actually extract this entire thing into a separate translation unit i think it's going to be beneficial let's go ahead and do that we're going to call it uh rec dir, uh, dot h uh if an def uh rec dir dot h and then we're going to define this entire thing and and the definition all right so uh let's put all of these things in there um uh, right so this is going to be here so then let's forward declare these functions mm, so regdir pop mm -hmm. so open regdir uh -huh. read regdir uh, close regdir uh, semicolon semicolon and i guess that's it okay uh, and uh, regdir.c which includes uh, rec dir h right and all of these files right so let's take a look so rec dir push blah 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 so this is a join path and apparently it also wants to have a join path unfortunately so in a join path is something that is shared between uh all of these things all right so we'll see if we'll be able to actually do that or maybe not i don't know um so i don't know who's who has to own join path it feels like join path for now wants to be in here right so let's actually keep it here and then later we'll figure out where we can put that uh right so ideally ideally i think like join path shouldn't be a thing in my opinion <laughs> uh right so but it is what it is maybe at some point i actually uh gonna rename it to something else not really rename but change it to something else ideally i want uh to have a buffer within the reg deer uh that manages the current paths and whatnot and maybe the stack is going to contain sort of like the um i don't know where where the particular paths end or whatnot because i think it, it is possible to manage the uh the paths without doing allocation malocation and some other stuff yeah i'm, I'm pretty sure it is possible so uh but i, I just don't want to spend time on that right now <laughs> so uh yeah anyway so in here uh so here's the path separator so maybe i'm gonna actually put it into uh, a rec tier uh to to the two so all of that is going to be here right so this is the path separator and uh yusu 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 kawaii freaking desu and durant is going to be like a part of this entire stuff there we go here is the durant stuff uh default source and um if i i suppose maybe we need to include that stuff in here it's kind of difficult where i have to define this kind of stuff let's actually include it in here uh and this is going to be reg h and uh let's try to compile that but before we compile that uh let's put src the dupe uh not redo rec dir dot c in here uh and maybe i'm gonna actually do something like src in here where we're gonna just keep all of these sources uh as a list so it's a little bit easier for us to just say src uh right so um src so this is actually the source code uh and then if we compile and everything uh okay so it's size t uh let's include the std lib in here what else do we need to include um string anything else assert mm. Mm, str dupe str dupe you cannot find the str dupe it is located in string and implicit declaration of str dupe really inside of regdir.c even though i included string it still cannot find the str dupe 
Uh, okay, so is that because I need to define default source thingy? I feel like that's the reason. Uh, this C uh, Linux macros, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, it, it was the case, apparently. <laughs> All of these macros, oh my God. Okay, so everything seems to be okay. Um, so now let's actually get rid of the visit files, right? Let's get rid of the visit files and try to use our API instead uh, and see if it's even working because we never actually tested any of that. <laughs> That's what's funny about this thing. We, we never tested. So uh, we need these three uh, functions, right? So we need to open the regdir. So here is the regdir, and we're opening the uh, this thing. Then uh, we have an entry, right? So uh, I suppose, yeah, I remember that I have to clean error now before running everything in here, just in case. So do I really need to clean error now? in here that's the good question if you know what i'm talking about if you know what i'm talking about i feel like i feel like i never have to clean it in here because the user of this function will clean it anyway for us right because that's what you have to do by using read deer uh like which is like a, a layer lower uh than we're working with so uh yeah uh, to to the two and yeah you're supposed to clean it if you didn't clean it um yeah i guess that makes sense i'm gonna just keep it like that if that will create an error we'll probably fix it okay so uh while entry uh, not equal to null or maybe while this thing uh we're gonna be just printing the name print f um rec dear uh, regdir file, so I'm going to put regdir prefix just to distinguish between the uh, the output of the previous version, uh, right? So I think it's going to be important, and uh, it's going to be entry d a name, right? Entry d name, and then uh, we'll have to repeat this entire stuff, right? And if error null equal to null for whatever reason, right? Error null equal to null, that means we couldn't uh, actually open this entire stuff. Um, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, uh, there could be some errors when you try to read something that where where you don't have a permission to read that, but it has to be handled differently. So if error no, uh, not why is it equal to no? <laughs> not equal to zero, uh, we'll have to do something like f print f uh, error um, could not uh, read the directory, and the question is which one. We need a way to get the current path. That's for sure. We need a way to just get the current path. Uh, so uh, let's do it like this. Char rec dir path. Rec dir rec dir. So essentially what it will do, it will just take the top uh, of the stack, right? It will take the top of the stack and uh, get the path from the top of the stack. Um, right, so let me, let me see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, yeah, first we need to even check that we have something on the stack, right? So maybe it's going to be assert uh, reg dir uh, stack size uh, greater than zero, right? So we have something in there. Then uh, reg dir uh, stack, reg dir stack. Then we take this entire thing, minus one, and then we return the path uh, from the frame like this. There we go. So this is going to be a reg dir path, and uh, because of that, it should be able could not read directory something like a um, reg dir path of reg dir, right? Reg dir path of reg dir, and uh, then we're going to exit with one, I suppose. Exit with one. So and after that, we need to close the the reg dir uh, like so. There we go. So it, it resembles the original code that we wrote at the beginning of this string. Oh, and by the way, since we can have a current path, I might as well actually just do something like, like this to actually print the full path. Okay, so it resembles the original code that we wrote at the beginning of the stream, and uh, let's see if it's working, right? If it's see if it's working, and uh, regdir is equal to why does it have to be equal to null? Um, Mm, not equal to no. Okay. 
Okay, so that went wrong. That is very interesting. Uh, it actually went very, very deep and apparently uh, it's, it's rather interesting. So what did it say? Yeah, it just exited abnormally. <laughs> Oops, uh, oops, 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 oops. Um, all right. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, so let me see. I think I know what's going on. Uh, we tried to go into dot dot, right? We tried to go into dot dot. Why the hell did we go into dot dot? I explicitly said don't go there. Uh, I think I didn't say it explicit enough. Uh, essentially, I should have actually put or in here, right? If, if this is a dot or dot dot, don't go in there, right? Please don't go in there. Uh, and it worked. There we go. So it recursively traversed without actually using recursion. How about that? And uh, since it is not re uh, explicitly using recursion, uh, it is quite easy for you to customize the action that you want to perform on each individual file, right? Because the API is so open. It's not a black box into which you have to inject the function. It is open box, right? So you open the directory, you iterate, and if you encounter something, you can just use this entire thing and it, it works. And what's interesting is that uh, you have a control over the size of the stack uh, of, uh, of the directory, right? So uh, in a recursive approach, in recursive approach, you kind of limit it, <laughs> you kind of limit it by the call stack, right? And if you want to uh, actually go deeper in, in, the, in the tree, right? If you want to go really, really deep, uh, you probably have to extend the stack or something like that. But there's also limitation on the length of the path. So maybe like the, the call stack is going to be fine. But anyway, the more you use call stack, the less you can use it for something else because you also store the local variables on the stack, right? So you don't want to waste too much memory on the stack. But here I can say, um, I don't know, I can have like a million uh, entries in the stack. Right. And since all that is allocated on in, in a heap, uh, it's just like, yeah, I have full control of the stack and it's a separate stack from the call stack. So we can still use call stack for some other things like local stuff. Right. So um, whether it's a best approach, I don't know uh, whether you have to do it like that. Probably not. I just wanted to do it because I had an opportunity to do that. Right. So because in, in programming, you can do things uh, different ways. It's like a question whether you want to do that or whether you have an opportunity to do that. Like I had an, I wanted to try to iterate the uh, tree structure, but in a sort of like a flat way, uh, maintaining my own stack. I always wanted to try to do that in like in my applications and I had an opportunity to do so. So I performed this exercise, whether you have to do that, like, I don't know, you do you. Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to try that. So not telling people what to do. Um, it, it, it feels like people quite often assume that whatever I do, I say that you have to do that all the time. At least that's the impression I, uh, I have when I see people comments and messages. It feels like people think that I'm like advocating this is the only and right way to do things. No, <laughs> like specifically here, I, wanna tr I just wanted to try that. Uh, so, and I went ahead and tried that. So there's nothing wrong with experimentations. Anyway uh cool we recursively traverse the file system uh without using recursion though um maybe one of the things i wanted to do here is uh so we have inconsistent uh naming here maybe that's what i want to fix i wanted to tr like mimic the derent api if you know what i'm talking about but i'm not sure if it's a good idea because we have this convention and this convention and it's kind of confusing so maybe we could rename open uh, to rec dear open right so let's actually follow our own convention but like slightly resembling dear rent uh, so uh, this is going to be read <sighs> rec dear close and uh, in rec dear dot c mm, rec dear close rec dear read uh, rec dear was it open? Yeah, I think uh, rec dear open because we have other things in here like push, pop, path, and so on and so forth. Uh, useful, useful. So uh, rec dear open, um, rec 
do read and mm, rec uh, dear read um, rec dear close cool so we don't even have um version control system in here maybe that's something that we have to fix uh let's actually do the following thing i'm gonna git ignore git ignore the dupe right just in case and i'm gonna initialize git init boom and let's actually commit everything in here including the a file right uh, we're gonna commit everything just for the testing purpose right ready set go there we go uh, and uh, yeah, so we're good to go pretty much. We're good to go. So what, what I was thinking about is that maybe I can also extract a function that gets the top of the stack, if you know what I'm talking about. So something like rec dir frame, rec dir, uh, rec dir top, uh, and it accepts rec dir, uh, rec dir, right? So, and maybe that will reduce uh, some of the code in inside of the implementation. Maybe we'll be able to get rid of this thing, uh, right? Because you will be able to do something like reg dir top, uh, reg dir, and then uh, path, right? So this one is going to be a pointer, of course, right? So you don't need path, or maybe at some point you will need an access to the directory handler directly. So and that's how you can do that. Um, I think it's going to be beneficial. Let's actually go ahead and do that. Uh, I think it's a good idea to have such function. Uh, rec dir, so instead of the path, right? So we're going to assert that rec dir uh, stack size is greater than zero, and then we can return something like rec dir stack. We uh, take the size minus one, we take the pointer, and there we go, we can remove this entire shit. So if I try to recompile here, I can do something like rec dir top, uh, and then uh, path. I cannot see shit in this mist. Uh, just to say, eh, now I can see shit. I think I think I can see. Okay, so because the, the the camera, the webcam actually covers the 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 code, right? So, but it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. So this is the top, and uh, in here this is going to be the path. Cool. So, and within the implementation itself, right? So every time we get the top, we might as well just use that function, right? So when I do push, I don't really get the top per se, or do I? That's a good question. Uh, maybe I do. Let's think about that. So we can allocate additional thing by incrementing the stack, right? So we allocated this thing, uh, right? So let's actually separate this stuff. Then I want to take the top, right? So this is going to be frame top and I do reg dir top uh, and um, two, 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 two. Uh, reg dir. So the first thing I want to do here, I suppose I want to assign top path to path in here, right? So that's what I did. So this is the path. And then I want to uh, open the directory. And if the directory has failed, right, if the directory has failed, now I need to do like additional stuff. And I'm not sure how easy it is to do that, right? Maybe what I can do here is just reg dir pop, right? I can do reg dir pop and I can just return minus one. Otherwise I can return uh, null, right? So that's, this could be a different implementation, right? So you create a new thing, uh, you take the top, you um, initialize this entire stuff. And if something went wrong, you pop. And inside of the pop, we have to actually have a special um you know code that checks that it doesn't try to close the null directory right so uh where is the implementation of pop yeah there we go so here we take the top and we close the directory but it makes sense to only close it if it's uh not equal to null if you know what i'm talking about right if it's not equal to null uh, and for the top path if path is equal to null that's totally fine i guess right so um i guess this might work that, i guess that might work i wonder if for the close deer you can call a close deer on null as well okay mm, 
function calls the directory stream associated a successful call uh it probably may return e bad f so you probably don't want to do that but anyway so and then you pop that and that will decrement the entire thing so you don't have to worry about that yeah there we go so if i try to recompile the entire thing it seems to be working and it also now traverses the dot git that's pretty cool so you see it recursively traverses everything that's that's so nice i really like it uh okay um clean uh, up uh rec dear uh unit there we go and let's push that uh we have nowhere to push that so i'm gonna actually restrain from doing that so uh where are to do so okay we're done with um recursive shit now we need to somehow compute the hashes of the files right so let's quickly do that after a small break because i need to make a cup of tea so um, um all right let's compute the hashes so um, we just need to pick some sort of like a hash function. Um, I don't think it matters right now which hash function we're going to use. Uh, we just need to have something, right? Because it's super easy to swap out the hash functions. So I, I think we could use something like SHA-256, right? Uh, and let's actually find maybe already existing implementations of SHA-256 in C, right? Uh, okay, so there is something in here. Uh, crypto algorithms, uh, Shadow 156. Okay. Uh, oh, I think I actually heard about this repo before. Yeah, it basically has a very simple implementations of uh, of the crypto algorithms and stuff. Like crypto algorithm MD5, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so and uh, what's the license of this thing? Uh, what's the license? I didn't see any license in here. Uh, all right. And I think they're on the public domain. Yeah, they are. The code is into the public domain free of any restrictions. Okay, so I think I'm going to uh, be using this thing. And I'm going to put this thing into the description for anyone who's interested in this kind of stuff. So, uh, crypto algorithms, rhythms, uh, repo. Uh, I'm going to put it in here. So, and let me actually clone this entire thing. Just, uh, we're going to just literally yoink uh some code from there uh right so it's gonna be uh, git clone and a boom um should have actually put ampersand but and that's fine uh shot 156 rot 13. <laughs> okay uh two, 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 two. does it have okay so it even has credits and stuff like that so i'm gonna not remove any of these things uh, so I'm gonna just put this stuff in here. Somebody actually trying to send me. Somebody trying to connect me. Uh, hackers. Um, okay, gun. Shot 156. And uh, yeah, this is literally I'm gonna just put the credit in here. Even though it's public domain, I don't have to put any credit in here. But I, I mean, I'm a re re really respectful to the person who actually saved me time. And uh, what I like about these things is that they're super simple right so what you have to do essentially is just the uh, like initialize the context feed bytes into the context and then finalize and get the hash right if i understand correctly so that's the entire thing essentially um right so let's try to link with this entire stuff uh, i'm gonna just remove uh, all of this thing here uh okay so maybe i'm gonna actually put a readme um File du duplicator, whatever that's supposed to be. <laughs> Quick start. Uh, console, uh, make, and then the dupe, I suppose. And we're going to put it like that. Uh, references, uh, and we're going to put the link to the script algorithms. Uh, SHA-256 was stolen from here. There we go. And we're going to add... Um, uh, add uh, SHA-256, uh, add stolen SHA-256 implementation, right, and um, I'm going to sneeze by the way, uh, just a second, uh, just a second, SHA-256, let's see. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, let's try to compile the entire stuff. Ah. 
It compiled first try. Would you look at that? Uh, it in fact compiled first try. I absolutely love that. Uh, so let's implement a function that would compute the uh, you know the hash of the of a particular file, right? So um, sha two hundred fifty six dot h, uh, and let's do it like this. Uh, print hash right and we're gonna provide uh, a file path right so this is gonna be file path and let's open the file right f open file path we're gonna open it for reading in binary and uh, if this entire thing is failed right f equal to null we're gonna say that bruh it has failed uh, f print f std error could not open file s Right, so this is going to be a file path. Uh, and we're going to exit with one, just with one. And here we're going to F close, uh, F, there we go. So uh, I suppose we're going to be uh, feeding the uh, whole file by chunks, right? Uh, but first we need to um, allocate some data for the context, right? I hope it's going to fit uh, it it must fit into the con uh, into the into the stack, right? So I might as well actually explicitly just mem set it to zero. Why not? Ctx zero size of ctx. Okay, so it's zero initialized. I suppose this is I, how I presume you have to work with this entire thing. And let's initialize the context. Okay, the context is initialized, and um, might as well do that before opening the file. Uh, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, I suppose we need to have some sort of a buffer, right? So it's going to be buffer uh, uh, 24, right? And we'll need to call a function fread, I presume, to read the, the whole buffer, right? To read the whole buffer, so we provide the buffer in here, then we provide the size of the buffer, and we say they want to read only a single buffer, and we do that from the f file. So f read, uh, as far as I know, may return uh, an error. So on success, f read return the number of bytes. Uh, there's no distinction between end of file um, or the end of file, it returns zero. Okay, so that means. Uh, we have to do something like uh, buffer size equal that. And while buffer size is greater than zero, we're going to be actually keep reading the entire thing. And I suppose we need to keep feeding it into the context, right? We need to keep feeding it into the context. Uh, right. And what's the byte equal to? Byte is unsigned character. Okay, that's fine. I can, I can probably do something like byte in here. It's fine. Um, sure. Mm -mm -mm. So here's the context, uh, then this is the buffer, and this is the buffer size. And as you can see, we're just feeding this entire thing into the buffer and keep reading from the buffer and feeding it into the thing. So if error has happened, uh, so in, in f, we're going to say that f print f uh, std error could not uh, read from file this. Uh, because of this, I think I didn't actually properly report errors in here. So the file is file path, and the error is std error, error no, and then we're going to exit with one. Right. And in here, we're going to be doing the other thing. Uh, so str error, error no. There we go. So, and after that, uh, we need to print the hash. We need to call the function final. I'm, I didn't really know if I'm using this library correctly, but uh, judging by the uh, API, I think that's how we're supposed to use that. I don't like the fact that it doesn't report the size of the hash, but I suppose the size of the hash is 256 bits, right? So that kind of makes sense to me. Right, and if I divide uh, 256 by 8, uh, it's a, it has to be 32 bytes. Uh, we, we can always take a look at the implementation of this entire thing just to see what's going on in here. So in here we have like 4 and it reaches up to 28. So 4, yeah, it's, it's actually 32 bytes. So which means that I can quite easily uh, do something like byte. It's, is it a byte? Yeah, it is a byte. Hash uh, 32. Yeah. 
uh, I might as well actually be fancy and just do something like this to indicate that it's 256, right? So, and then we're extracting the hash out of this entire thing and we need to print that hash for that file, right? So how are we going to be printing this hash? We can print it, I suppose, byte by byte, byte by byte. Mm, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to iterate uh, size ti032. Uh, might as well maybe say size of hash, All right? And here we're going to be doing f print f. Actually, just print f. Uh, and I want to treat it as a number, so I'm going to put x in here, right? And then it's going to be hash i uh, converted to an integer, right? And uh, after that, I'm going to do f uh, print f uh, new line. But I'm not sure if I need to put a new line. I think the new line is going to be put by whoever actually, you know, calls this function, if you know what I'm talking about. Hmm, it would be rather interesting. Maybe we should return the hash uh, via this function, so then people can print it however they want. That sounds like a good idea, actually. Let, let me try to do that. So I'm going to do it like this. Um, hash... Uh, I don't know if I want to keep that. Yeah, let's actually be a little bit more explicit. So uh, hash of file, right, hash of file. Uh, and uh, in here, we don't have to print anything. We're just returning this entire thing uh, like so. Yeah, hash of file. So, and uh, yeah, the, what are my neighbors are doing? I have no idea. So everything seems to be working still. Uh, so let's go ahead and compute the hash on each individual thing. Uh, what I'm thinking is that, can we have a function that converts this hash into a string, if you know what I'm talking about? Hash as sister, right? Uh, and essentially it will accept the hash 32. And then we may actually provide the output Right, and the output is essentially 32 multiplied by 2 plus 1, right? Because each byte is going to be two characters, right? And that's what you can, can have in here, essentially, if I understand correctly. Let's, let's actually give it a try. So uh, for size t less than 32 plus plus i. And how are we going to be doing all of that? Uh, so mm -mm -mm -mm. output i... Uh, multiplied by 2 and this is where uh, the byte starts right so this is where the byte starts so the first byte uh, which is plus 0 is basically hash i uh, divided by so we, we do that we're gonna do that in hexadecimal divided by 10 uh, right and plus um, oh boy this one is rather interesting so you have to you have to have a special function that converts, uh, you know, a digit, right? A digit to a character, so a hex digit, right? So you need to have something like hex digits in here, right? So this is going to be hex digit, uh, right? And the the one is going to be basically a mod of that, right? It's going to be basically a mod of that. Mm -hmm. mm, but maybe uh, maybe that mode is going to be done by the hex digit itself yeah that's actually a good idea actually i like that uh okay so this is what you're doing here and we're filling up the whole thing and then in the output we can say 32 multiplied by 2 is going to be equal to zero and that's how we're going to we're going to create such a thing so and inside of a hex digit we can quite easily just do something like digit um, equal to digit mod uh, mod 0x10 right so we always take the one digit out of this entire thing and if uh, digit um, I might as well actually do unsigned I think that's a good idea to, to make it unsigned mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, uh, and uh, if the digit is between 0 and uh, 9, right, between 0 and 9, we return digit uh, plus 0, 
So that's what we do. If it's between 10 and 15, we do that plus A. All right. Otherwise, this is assert unreachable. And uh, it is unreachable because this code prevents it from being ever reachable. All right. So, yeah. This is a straight up unreachable code. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. So hash as system uh, and uh, comparison when signed is always true. Sure. Um, okay, cool. So now, uh, on each of these things, uh, what we want to do essentially, we want to yeah, we want to actually have a full path for this thing, All right? So we want to have something like uh, path, join path, uh, right? So here's a join path and we want to do hash of file, right? So this is going to be hash of file. Um, so this is the path and we need to allocate the hash somewhere here. So this is going to be our hash. So then uh, we want to do something like hash as sister, hash, uh, hash sister, uh, right? And this one is going to be just char sister like this, right? And then we can uh, print its SHA-256 by, uh, by just printing uh, hash sister. And that's basically it. Hopefully that will work and something went horribly wrong. Segmentation fault. Uh, okay, so here I just have to do uh, something like um, path. Oh, and another interesting thing is that uh, we need to free the path after we are done uh, working with it. So it's actually free the path, uh, free the path and uh, okay, so that looks like shit. Why is that M? Uh, so some of them are like M, but that's not a correct thing to have, in my opinion. That is definitely not a correct thing to have. Mm. So if the digit uh, between 10 and 15, uh-huh, uh-huh, so hash one, we divide it by that entire thing. Yikes, 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 yikes. Okay, um, that doesn't look good. That does definitely, that definitely doesn't look good. And I wonder why. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me take a look at that one more time. So why do we have M's in here all of a sudden? Uh, some of these things are the same even. Uh, yep, it looks like quite a lot of them are the same. Well, I mean, yeah, because probably they are the same files. Are they? Are they the same files? Uh, so if I open the file at point, uh, right, and if I open this thing at point... No, it's, it's a different files actually, so we don't read this shit correctly. Uh, that's for sure. That's for sure, for sure. Um, so even if we compute hash incorrectly, it shouldn't look that weird. So that means we definitely have a bug in this specific function. We 100% have a bug in here. Uh, but where is it? Uh, where is the bug? I don't see it. So uh, we could also have a bug in hex digit, right? So... It is a bug in hex digit. So if we, we do a mod uh, on this entire thing, so this entire thing should be less than 16. It must be less than 16, for sure, for sure. Uh, so if it's less than nine, we just add zero to that and it's gonna be only like zero to, to nine. If it's less or equal than 10, it's gonna be A, B, C, D, E, F, and it's never gonna, so, something is definitely wrong with this function right because it should never produce like this weird m thingy like never <laughs> but it does but it actually does which which is really really weird um so there's no literally reason like no matter what you put into the hash it should never produce this kind of thing so the question is what the hell is going on 
Um, what the hell is going on? So maybe we can we could debug this entire thing. I think the time has come to bust out the debugger. So uh, the dupe and let's break and let's run the entire thing and what do we have in here if i print hash it's just like a bunch of bytes in here which does in fact make sense and uh and maybe we could display um hash and the output right so this is the first one and this is uh, okay so then uh we're filling up with the rest of the stuff Okay, so this is O. Why the fuck is it O? Uh, so if I print the hash uh, I, right, it's 300 and... Mm. Okay, so it's already... Uh, well, I guess it's an octo, isn't it? So it's something super dumb and I don't see it. I really, really don't see it. Uh, why the fuck would it be like that? Uh, 200, well, I, oh yeah, okay. I'm looking at that and it's actually 232. Um, okay, so if I do something like 232 and divide it by 0x10, it's gonna be 14. And uh, if I do mod of this thing, it's going to be 8. Uh, nowhere here. Ah. Uh, okay. I, I'm already tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, this is basically what happens. And like, I'm having Twitch PTSD right now. Because usually when this thing happens, like t Twitch chat is going crazy. And this is precisely the reason why I don't want to stream these days because, yeah, you're being tired and uh, you start making making mistakes and that pisses off people and it's just like freaking scary. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, so now it, it starts to make sense. Okay, so, so this entire thing starts to actually make sense. So, and do we have a repeating things? Uh, do we have a repeating things? We do have a repeating things, but this is primarily because uh, they're empty. All of these files uh, are empty. That's why they're repeating. Actually, that's pretty cool. So these are repeating files. Uh, right, and this is because they're empty. Are they? They're not fucking empty. Okay, so there's something wrong in here. Terribly, terribly wrong. Uh, but at the same time... Um, I'm not sure. Like, really? Uh, so, this is not correct. This is straight up incorrect. Uh, and furthermore, if I compute the MD um, SHA 256 sum on this A file, uh, it is in fact that, is it? Oh shit, it is, it is correct. Uh, right, and if I try to run it one more time. Uh -huh. Okay. Why is it computing this value as empty that's the good question is that because i couldn't read these files or something is that why uh maybe those are like i can't read those files like what the hell is going on uh all right so there's one way to check that i suppose we could use uh find uh, and we can find like all of the files so here are all of the files in here right so and for each of this file we can execute sha256 right uh, sum uh, just to see what's gonna happen and uh, if we take a look at that stuff uh, yeah okay so this is fine uh, for those things these are empty and that is correct but some of these things are not 
fine. This is not the correct way of computing them. I also like that it prints the hash first. Maybe that's precisely what we want to do in here uh, because it makes it like, yeah, it, it makes it look fine. Uh, so let's actually do it like that. This is going to be the path. And this is going to be the path, uh, right? So, and if I try to reduplicate, yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things are simply read as empty, right? They're straight up read as empty, and I have no idea why. Uh, so, if I can't access them, right? If I can't access those things, uh, I would expect to have an error, right? Um, but I don't see an error, right? So that means it's fine um i don't know so here is the context i zero initialize the context and then i initialize the context itself and as we read the entire thing i'm just feeding maybe i'm feeding stuff incorrectly i'm not quite sure so i'm reading this as binary uh right i'm maybe i'm using this thing incorrectly but uh judging from the api in here i am using it correctly am i um Mm -mm -mm. So we do update. Maybe data is supposed to be of a certain size, but no, it's actually length. So I would presume you can actually feed the chunks of any data. Please don't tell me that it has to be of a specific size. This is actually really bad. I don't like that this API does not document the sizes of these things, right? So you could put 32 in here. Yes, of course, C doesn't care about the sizes of the argument if, like in, in the functions. It doesn't care, it decays to the pointer. There's no need to tell me that. I programmed in C enough that I know that, but it's a good way to document that at least, right? So you don't have to go into the implementation of the function. Uh, every time I say these kind of things, people just presume that I don't know that this kind of thing decays into the pointer and I have to explain that I do know. And in fact, my argument is that uh, I, I want to do that for documentation. Like, I have to deal with this kind of people on the internet like every single day. It's just really, really aggravating. Uh, so, um, what do we have in here? So the, the data is supposed to be uh, like this. And uh, yeah, it just like iterates the, the entire data. So there's nothing special in here. So uh, all right, all right, all right. So uh, maybe I need to make a small break because I'm starting to like make very stupid mistakes. Uh, right. So yeah, I definitely need a small break. So and after the break, we're going to try to you know troubleshoot this entire thing. And maybe we'll be able to compute the hash uh, of, the, of the files. So yeah. All right, let's try to troubleshoot this thing. Uh, so maybe we want to transform this entire thing into something uh, that accepts the path to the file, right? And uh, computes the hash of that path. So it's a little bit easier to, uh, you know, see uh, what's going on in here and compare it with the actual SHA-256 function. Right? So, so we're going to assert that RFC is uh, greater or equal to 2, right? So we have something to uh, read and then hash of file, right? So we're going to have we have this function. So it's going to be argv1. Uh, so this is going to be the hash and I'm going to allocate the hash thingy. What, what are my neighbors are doing? Uh, in here, right? So uh, we're reading it like that. And then I want to do hash as sister, right? So this is going to be like so. I'm providing the hash and then the output, right? So there we go. So this is where we are sort of writing this entire thing. And then I'm going to print this entire stuff like that. So this is going to be the output. And uh, the path is going to be, let's actually call it path like this. And this is going to be just path. And this is going to be like this. Cool. Uh, so if I try to compile this entire thing, um, we have to be in a different folder. So that makes sense. And if I try to dedupe, uh, for instance, A, uh, that's the hash. And what if I use SHA-256? sum instead of that uh it is roughly the same uh all right maybe i could just actually compare this thing side by side uh well that's a pretty long thing to do 
uh, okay so we have that uh, and both of them I think produced pretty much the same uh, the same output right so I suppose the problems start when you're trying to um, you know use something else I forgot to put uh, like a new line in here uh, so let's do make uh, right so dedupe uh, make file for instance okay so and it's still not correct because if you do SHA-256 256 sum on the make file uh, right it's completely different so something 100% went wrong in here right so because it's still the hash of an empty file uh, right which is kind of sus like it's it shouldn't be the thing so I made a very stupid mistake somewhere and I have no I don't know I don't know where so hash a file right um, let's actually try to debug that so I'm gonna go ahead and do the dupe right and I'm gonna run it on a make file so I'm gonna suppose break on hash of file we can actually break on main uh, I'm an idiot I should have broken right now and then run it again right so and let's enable this and I think okay so here is that and we're going into the hash of file uh, so we can display the context uh, let's actually print it first maybe it's too big uh, I think it could be displayable relatively easy uh, right so I might just keep displaying it so we zero initialize this entire thing it's completely zero now and then uh, we initialize it with something okay so uh, we open the file file was successfully opened and we read the buffer if I print what what's inside of the buffer uh, this is what we have in the buffer right and uh, if I print buffer size uh, classic F read does not return the amount of red bytes. It returns the amount of red elements of the size you provided in here. Thank you, C. Very cool. What a nice API. So the main problem of the C API is that constant confusion between amount of bytes an amount of elements and it is like that throughout the entire uh, library throughout the entire library there's constant it like the entire library is designed to constantly confuse bytes and elements and it's frustrating and it leads to a lot of wasted time a lot of wasted human resources it's insane uh, and it doesn't even have to be that way right so you could design a library that like doesn't allow you to confuse those things but you choose to do so uh, so essentially the fix is swapping these two arguments believe it or not that's the fucking fix <sighs> that's literally the fucking fix seriously uh, and uh, let, let's see if, if it's gonna work well we need to recompile the entire thing right uh, uh, just in case and there we go so it's fixed welcome to the C program <sighs> absolutely disgusting <clears throat> um, what the hell is going on where is my stuff um, my keyboard just stopped <laughs> working <laughs> god damn it uh, uh, okay um, so yeah uh, we've got we've got that um, so now if I try to uh, iterate through everything right so we iterating through everything uh, and computing the hashes and I think this is roughly correct uh, right so I might as well actually you know remove everything and leave only this entire thing uh, yeah this looks like a correct thing and what's funny is that we can quite easily find all of the empty files remember how i uh, explained the entire idea that is used in computer forensics for uh, you know eliminating uh, unimportant files this is how easy it is like you can just take a look at the hash of an empty file and here we go here is the uh, empty files i know precisely that the rest of the files are not empty right the rest of them are not empty 
okay, so I would say that we achieved the second goal. Uh, we're computing the hashes of the files. So the, the third goal is going to be building the hash table out of all of that. So we're not going to be implementing our own hash table. Uh, so I think we're going to be using the, the ready one from STB. Uh, but anyway, so what do we have here? Um, okay. Mm -mm. Uh, compute the hashes of the files. All right, so and let's go to the STB libraries. Uh, nothing's STB and STB libraries actually have implementation for the hash function. It's it's located in DS and it's a pretty convenient implementation. So we're going to use that. Uh, I think I'm going to even put that in a readme. Uh, so hash table was stolen from uh, here, right? So that's the hash table. Uh, and uh, let me just download this entire thing. Uh, w get and a boom. Okay, cool. So uh, let's include the hash table in here. So it's going to be stb ds, and we also have to define stb ds implementation, right? Otherwise, it's not going to include the implementations. Uh, okay, so I need to refresh how to use uh, these um, this hash table because I kind of forgot how to do that. Uh, so I suppose you just create. So this is a dynamic array. We don't really need a dynamic array, um, but we need a hash function, right? We need a hash function. So for the hash function, we'll need to define um, a structure, right? I'm pretty sure we'll need to define a structure uh, for the T. Okay. okay, so we need to define this structure. So a key is going to be one thing and the value is going to be another thing. Uh, so let me go ahead and do that. So our cell, right? So our cell, I don't even know how to call that, but let's call it just cell, uh, is going to consist of a key which is actually uh, the hash of the of the file. We're going to use the hash of the file as the key, right? So and it's going to be 32 bytes. And the value the value can be arbitrary as far as I know, so it doesn't really matter. So here we'll have to uh, keep track of the list of the files, right? We need to keep track of the list of the files. So uh, actually paths, not really files, but paths. Um, so What's going to be the easiest way to do that? Maybe we can pre-allocate uh, like a, an elements uh, for the list, right? And we're going to assume that you're not going to have too many of the duplicate files, at least for now, right? At least for now. Mm, though this could be like a growing list, we could constantly reallocate. Uh, yeah, we, we could do something like that. So it's going to be char, uh, and this is going to be paths. And here we could have something like paths uh, count, and just like how many of such paths do you have in there? And since this is like a um, growing array, uh, oh, this is a good point. This is actually a good point. We could utilize the dynamic array from STB as well, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, we could do that. Uh, declare an empty dynamic array of... Yeah, that is actually perfect. So that means we can have paths, which is also going to be dynamic array. So we're using both of the data structures from STB simultaneously to keep track of all of these things. So I'm not sure how we're going to be cleaning up all of that memory and stuff like that. Um, so maybe we won't going to do that, right? <laughs> so maybe we're going to just let it leak, let it leak. Let it leak, oh, let it leak. Memory costs nothing. Let it leak. Do, do, do. Um, so yeah, anyway, how are we gonna be doing all that? Um, so here's the hash, here's the stuff. And um, we just compute that hash and the only thing we're doing in here we're just printing this thing but instead of printing it i think we have to put it into the hash table right so we need to put it into the hash table um so put uh the path into hash table uh so where are we going to be keeping the hash table so this is the single cell 
uh, right, so this is going to be that. Uh, and mm -mm. Uh, let's call it database, right? So this is the database. And um, since the database, we can call db. And this is going to be a record, right? So this is the record, and it's completely empty. Right. It's a completely empty record. So the first thing we probably want to do, right? The first thing we probably want to do is query the uh, specific key, right? As far as I know, uh, hs, is it called hs? What's the prefix for the, it's hm. So you can do sh or hm get, right? And you have to provide the key, right? You provide the key and you'll get the index within the table. So that's the thing we need. Uh, and key uh, in our case is going to be hash, right? The key in our case is going to be hash. And because of that, we don't really need to display the hash right now. We only need to compute the, uh, the hash of the file. But here is an interesting thing, right? So this is the DB and then we get the hash and we've got the index within the database. So the hash in here is an array. And as I already mentioned, passing an array like that decays it to a pointer. So you cannot do that. So to uh, circumvent that, we probably want to wrap the hash into some sort of like a special structure, right? When you take an array and wrap that array into a structure, uh, you basically can pass that thing by a value, right? So this is going to be our hash. And maybe this is basically what I have to use everywhere from now on, right? So if I want to pass the hash, I'm going to be passing it by by value. And if I'm passing this thing, I'm going to be passing it by a reference and I'll have to go through the entire thing and just compute everything. And this is going to be our key, right? So that's what we're going to use as the key, uh, hash key. There we go. Uh, cool. Um, where is the stuff? So this is going to be the uh, hash. It's going to be uh, in here. Uh, then we pass it by the pointer. Then we get the index of this thing. And as far as I know, index could be negative, right? So if index is less than zero, that means we don't have that thing in there yet. And we'll have to uh, insert it first. So hm, uh, hm set um, put. Yeah, there we go. Um, you can put essentially this thing, uh, key, a value, or you can put an item. This one is very interesting. So you can put an actual item. Do we want to use uh, this one or this one? This one accepts a value. And in our case, if you think about it, the value is quite well defined uh, record. This is the value. So, and the initial value is going to be basically null, right? The initial value is going to be basically null. So it's a key and the value, and that's a list of characters in there, right? It's going to be basically null. So maybe that's the function that we want to use in here, right? So if it's less than that, we do a put, uh, right? So uh, we provide the database. Here's the database. The key is going to be the hash and the value is going to be null. So that's the value we're going to put in there. Uh, that's the value we're going to put in there. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. So this one is actually kind of sus. So I think I want to be super careful because uh, dynamic arrays, they modify the inner thingy. So yeah, let's, let's actually not do that. I think it has to be just paths. And I will have to create a like completely new record in here. So this is going to be the record, uh, record. Uh, and uh, record hash is going to be equal to hash. And uh, record paths is going to be equal to null. But on top of that, you'd have to push the path in, in there, right? You have to push the path in there. So array push. All right, or maybe um, array put, I don't quite remember. So I think it's array put. Uh, where is the documentation? There we go. So uh, I'll have to do something like record paths. And what I'm going to put in there, I'm going to put the path that we found in here. Right, there we go. So, and then I'm putting the um, 
the actual record, right? So I just put a record in here and in HM put S. So I just put an item. Okay, that's cool. All right, so that's how we're going to be initializing. All right, so we initialize in the first thing and then we do the rest of the stuff. Okay. Otherwise, if we found this thing, we can quite easily just get that thing and uh, do uh, the usual array put uh, record paths and uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh, we put the path in here. So that's basically it. Believe it or not, that's basically it. So we're trying to find a particular hash within a hash table. If we didn't find, we create a new record, right? We initialize it completely and we put it in a hash table. Uh, otherwise, we put this thing in here. So if I do HM put, just a regular HM, HM put S, right? What do I get? Uh, inserts um, uh, struct with the key. If the struct is already present uh, in the hash map, it dates it. Okay, and then it returns the struct itself. And I'm not quite sure if that's exactly what I want. Uh, because I would like to have the, um, the index so I can do something about that. I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess it's fine. It's kind of fine for now. All right. So if I recompile the entire thing, is it going to compile? Let's actually find out. So hash i. OK, so now I have to go through all of these things and just do something like bytes. Right. So uh, final, I have to use bytes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hash uh, is a pointer. OK, so that means I have to do it like that. Anything else? Um, OK. Oh, yeah, I do quite remember. So. Yeah, there is kind of like a limitation on what we can do in here. And I think um, this could be fixed by just using Clang, <laughs> if I remember correctly, right? So if, I, if you use the Clang, it's just going to work properly. Yeah, it, it will. All right. So it's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Uh, so this is not a dot and uh, hash. It's a key. There we go. All right, seems to be compiling. Uh, okay, so we collected everything, right? We collected everything into the hash table. And um, now we probably want to iterate through everything in the hash table and output things that are duplicates, right? So is there any way for us to iterate through the entire thing? Uh, HM put S, so uh, the hash table. Okay, given T is a structure, blah, 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 special interface. Mm -hmm. So I suppose I can get this size, it returns the number of elements in the hash map. Uh, returns the number of elements, uh, okay, so this is unsigned. Um, returns the index. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh, new str dupe. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You iterate over the contents, okay. This data structure are realloced when they grow and the macro functions write the previous pointer. Okay, that's that's fine. Uh, you iterate over the contents of the dynamic array and the hash map in exactly the same way you use uh, hmlen. Oh, really? Uh, you iterate over the contents of a dynamic array and a hash map in exactly the same way using array len, hm len, and sh len. So hm len returns the amount of buckets that you have to iterate over, right? Uh, so operations except array in Erdil are all of one amortized, but individual operations can be slow, so this data structure may not be suitable for real-time use. Okay, that's that's fine. Uh, all right, so I'm going to presume that that's how we do that. So before I'm going to just print anything, I think I want to just run the entire thing and confirm that it doesn't crash or anything. Uh, right, so let's actually recompile everything one more time and I'm going to do the dupe and it exited successfully. So we didn't suck fault it at least, which is already nice for a C program. It's not bad for a C program. All right. So let's iterate through this entire stuff. PTR diff t i equals zero less than hm len, and we're gonna do something like this, right? And if uh, if dbi paths uh, to paths 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 
uh, array len is greater than zero, right? It's actually greater than one, right? We, we care about only the things that are duplicated, right? We only care about those. If they are duplicated, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be actually printing their hash and then the list of the paths, right? Then the list of the paths. So, uh, okay. Uh, how are we going to print the hash? So hash sister uh, as sister. There we go. So hash as sister. Uh, we're going to be taking dbi key, then I'm going to take the output uh, and I'm going to just provide it in here. Right? So this is going to be like that. And that's what I'm printing in here. It's going to print f uh, s uh, like so output. Cool. So and after that, I need to iterate uh, the array itself. Uh, I might as well do something like size t uh, j, right? We're iterating the internal thing, array length dbi paths, uh, right, plus plus j. And in here, we're going to be printing the rest of the things, one, two, three, four, s, and uh, it's going to be dbi paths j, right? So that's basically it. And according to my understanding, the, we have to see only one duplicated hash, right? We have to see only one duplicated hash. Uh, let me do something like this. Uh, I'll try to fix this, uh, like, you know, STB thing a little bit later. I think I'm using like a Pepega, um, Pepega GCC version or something. Uh, PTR DPT. Okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, we only should see like a single hash in there, uh, to, to do two and let's dedupe and are we ready? I think we're ready and it worked. There we go. Actually, we found two duplicates, right? So there's two files that are the same. So the first one is the head right it contains uh this thing and the second one is the master and it's absolutely the same according to this hash so and we managed to detect that by actually uh, you know doing that that is so cool <laughs> hell yeah like I, we did it we actually did it so yeah we, we can find duplicates now i can now run it on my system and just like find all of the duplicates files and maybe find or remove them or something. Uh, I don't know. That sounds actually pretty cool. Um, so I suppose we achieved the epic victory royal. So build the hash table. Do we have any other to-dos? I, I think the only to-dos that are left are about memory management, right? Specifically in here, I'm not happy of using malloc in here because I think it overcomplicates the situation. But it's kind of like uh, I don't really have much choice because I still have to do join path in here. But I might as well actually get uh, get rid of the join path in uh, the recursive traversal of the directory, right? So because I can just have a local buffer that fits the whole path all the time. So uh, yeah, so this is one of the things to do here. And another thing is that we don't clean up uh, memory allocated by the iteration process is not uh, clean, cleaned, uh, cleaned up properly and it's allocated by join path, uh, dynamic array of paths and uh, hash table, right? So there's like the three sources of the garbage that you need to clean up. So you need to clean up the stuff that is allocated by the join path, then clean up the stuff that is allocated by array put, right? And then clean up the stuff that is allocated by uh, HM puts, right? So uh, all of that just stacks up and you need to allocate all of that. So maybe it would be nice to actually have a custom allocator that basically uh, makes all of the allocations into like a single area, right? That you can then just clean up in a single swoop. Right, so yeah, at the end of the application, because all of that can be like put into like a single like heap. Um, and by heap, I don't mean a specific heap of, of the program, but then just heap as the, um, as the place to put things in. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. So, um, okay, so let me do a committee committee. Um, mm -mm 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 
Okay. So implement uh, keeping track of the uh, file hashes. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, so, uh, yeah. Let's actually try to run it on some other projects and see if we have any significant duplicates. Uh, I wonder if I try to... So, like, sodium uh, directory is actually quite huge. If I try to print the whole size of the sodium directory, I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, fast enough to even print everything. There's a lot of shit in here, for sure. Um, also, computing the hash uh, could be slow because we're computing the hash by one kilobyte. So this is something to also consider. Right, so um, hash of file. Um, okay, you may want to allocate a bigger chunk of memory to compute the hash of the fun uh, of the file faster because like by one kilobyte is kind of like a kind of meh. So this entire thing is too big to test it right now. So uh, I think I'm gonna, I don't know. Mm, I wonder what's going to be the best way to actually test all of that. I, I'm not sure. So something that actually can uh, can uh, contains like a bit of duplication of our nation. Um, <laughs> maybe we can actually introduce the duplications ourselves, right? So maybe I'm going to have a, a hello file that contains hello. And I may as well copy paste that file in here and just call it something like test, right? Uh, and run the dupe and did it, did it found, find it? Yeah, it actually found it, right? As you can see, so it, it actually found it. So we have a thing that computes all of that. You know what would be even cooler? Uh, also to do a little bit of a parallelization, right? So maybe like uh, traverse the thing in several threads uh, or something like that. That would be a rather interesting, I think. Uh, and I wonder how such parallelization could fit into our model of like flat iteration of the, of the directory. So that could be also interesting to do. Uh, but yeah, so um, let's put it to do some sort of parallelization. Anyway, but all of that could be done uh, next time. So let's actually clean up the garbage from here. So this is going to be additional work, right? Additional work. Let's definitely remove this file. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Let's remove this thing. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So, and I think that's fine. So there's also a couple of garbage stuff in here. Uh, okay, remove garbage, uh, garbage, and I'm gonna, I didn't, I didn't even create a proper, uh, directory for our project. So let's quickly do that. Uh, to, 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 de dupe. So do I want to publish it right away? I think I'm not going to publish it right away. Uh, right. I'm going to wait until the video is, uh, public. Well, I mean. Yeah, and only then I'm going to publish it. So not to spoil uh, anything for people who's following me on GitHub. Uh, right, so and let's add the remote. Let's add the remote and let's push that right into the repo. OK, so and people quite often like accuse me of uh, reinventing the wheel and refusing to use other people's libraries. So literally using other people's libraries. Like, I don't mind to use somebody's library if it's not shit. These libraries are not shit. And they're really pleasant to use. Because you can just basically drop them into your project and there you go. You have a uh, hash function computation and a uh, hash table and also dynamic arrays. And all of that is just like so easy to use in the C project. So I, I don't mind. So my problem is not that I want to reinvent everything. No, I just don't want to use a crappy libraries. That's, is, is, is it too much to ask, right? So I, I don't care about like using third party dependencies. I would like to use third party dependencies if they were not shit. Right, so and it's kind of, kind of difficult these days to find uh, not shut uh, dependencies. It is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, so check out the source code of this thing. I hope I actually pushed everything. 
Uh, yeah, I pushed everything and I'm going to put that uh, in the description, of course. So the source code, right, the source code. And uh, I mentioned the crypto algorithm repo. So I also probably want to mention the, the STB hash table, right? Uh, the STB hash table. Uh, and uh, you can find it in here. So here is the STB hash table, STB uh, hash table. Uh, two, 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 two. Boom. So we can find all of that in here. All right. So I'm going to tweak the implementation of this tool a little bit. And I'm going to try to run it on my system to find potential duplicate files, right? I will definitely have to speed up the computation of the hash because like, like one kilobyte of the buffer is too small. You, you may want to, maybe I'm going to allocate like one gigabyte, right? So that will make sense probably. But anyway, uh, thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you all on next session, on the next Zoisin session. And uh, yeah, nothing much to say. I'll see you there. Love you all. Mm -hmm.